Hello, everybody. It's raining outside, storming outside, and all of that, but it ain't like the rain and the funk we're going to bring on Mick and Rick. This is Mickey Clayton, the coach, with the famous, the infamous, All-American, award-winning, re favorite reporter's reporter, the legendary Ricardo Brown. Rick, Rick. <laughs> Ricardo, no. Ricardo was my arch nemesis when I was in elementary school. And everyone called him Rick and me, Little Rick. No, <laughs> never Ricardo. But I will go by the name of Richard, but only by a few certain people. <clears throat> What's happening, Coach Coach? Man, you know, you my hero as always. We don't need another hero. Oh, there you go. There you go, boy. Hey, let's go. School of journalism. He keeps it on and popping all the time. What's up, School of Journalism? Hey, hey. Love you. Miss you. Oh, man. you! I told you when I did um, the Black Men on, on Sunday, one of their uh, guys who really have it going on, Corey, he's from the School of Journalism. You know, they still want me to connect you with them. I was supposed to be on this show last Sunday. I was asleep. I got a <laughs> you know, anytime you find black men doing something positive, it has to be celebrated and you have to participate in it. You know, I, it always bothers me that even as a people, we carry negative news 10 times faster than we carry good news. It's true. That, that part is true. But, I, you know, I think that's a human thing, though, Coach. I really do. Because I think people, if, if you look at the news in general, just any broadcast uh, up there, I guess it would be Channel 2 or 28 or whatever the broadcasts are up in Tallahassee, ABC, NBC, CBS, their local news. Is, news. It usually, unless a, a team wins a championship or something, they usually always start off with the negative news. And then they may sprinkle in some good news because it seems to grab everyone's attention, which I don't know why someone winning an award or some kids doing all A's and going into Harvard. I don't know why that wouldn't lead the news, but I guess people gravitate toward negative news. And I think it's the cynical part of me that is like, y'all are crazy because give me good news any day because I live the negative stuff. Don't need it. Just give me my good news. Well, tell me this, Rick, uh, and this is this is actually a true story. You in the school of journalism, there, there's a code of ethics and all of that, but I remember a reporter from the local newspaper here in Tallahassee. I know you're down in on the West Coast, down in Tampa, famous reporter, Lakeland Ledger. But the reporter actually told me, out of his mouth, sitting in my desk, they get raises and promotions from getting coaches fired. And he looked me in the face and told me that. And I was a little <laughs> See, you know, and, and, and um, there, there was a guy up there who used to, uh, and I think he passed away, so I don't want to, I don't want to misspeak him, so I won't even say his name. But there's a guy who, who seems to be, Anyway, no, I hope he was joking when he was telling you that. I've if any if any newspaper or journalistic outlet is worth its two cents and really means to give the news to the masses, we don't play a part in that. All we try to do is give you give it to give it to you like we do it. Straight no chase. I mean and, and it's hard to, the hard part is containing biases because <clears throat> you try to get both sides of stories, but if it's negative in any kind of way, it's hard to get both sides because the one side may not want to give it up. So it may seem slanted. You have to fight your own inner biases, but to get raises because coaches get fired, I really hope that was a, a joke that just fell flat because reporters usually can't tell jokes. So uh, I hope not, Coach. But, and I will not speak ill of the, 
the Dixie Dixie crap. I mean, <clears throat> the Democrat. So <laughs> I won't say that's their philosophy, but I, any any newspaper or news outlet that's worth its um, worth, that's not true. Okay, I. But he meant that, and I remember during the course of the season, I asked him. I said, "How come you?" You write all these stories, but you don't ever write about the fact that we're so hurt and we're down to only one starter that's healthy. He said, Coach, it's not my job to make excuses for you. Okay. Okay. Well, all right. Well, okay. But I said, but that's the news. That That's the part of the story. He yeah, was like, is. okay, whatever. Now, mind you, mind you, he had also applied for a job as my assistant coach of which he didn't get hired and his reporting on the Florida a and basketball team went further, further south. Hold that thought for a second. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, okay, I'm back. Had to get something off my chest. <clears throat> but Rick, they, they, they put him on FSU beat for a while and he tried to say some, uh, do some negative stories about Coach Hamilton. Hmm. They cut that off. They were like, he had, because at that time he wasn't really winning. But they told him pretty much that if he continued to be negative about their basketball coach, that they were going to withdraw all their support from the Democrats. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to call the paper name. <laughs> that was the end of that. They took him back off that beat. Uh, yeah. Now, anytime that a, um, any, any entity, whether it's business or, uh, a school or in sports or whatever has control over a newspaper, then you're in trouble. So, and that's one thing I will give the powers that be, especially in the 90s and early 2000s when I was at the paper. A lot of people hated us, and that was fine because we told it like it was, and we didn't. If you did wrong, you did wrong. If you did great. We reported that as well. I think that's the way you're supposed to go. You, you, because everyone isn't. Every story can't be all roses, but mm -hmm. every story ain't shit either. Oops, right. That, but yeah. it's not. So there, there is a balance there, and, and you can tell the reporter or oh, how they are by how they write. I, I honestly believe that. So. And and, and 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 all of that, and you know, before uh, we get too far into something that's really, really kind of serious about this uh, COVID nineteen and all, and how crazy this stuff really is, I wanna, I want you to uh, see a little bit of something that I have here. Did you know? <laughs> Do y'all know? Did you know? Did you know? Did you know? Did you know? Did you? Did you? Did you? Did you? Did you? Did you know? I know I really can't tell you much in the sports world that you didn't already know, but there was a great article called Dimes and Pearls. A spinoff Diamonds and Pearls by none other but Prince. It's in Sports Illustrated, written by L. John Wertheim. Man, it's a great, great story about Prince. Did you know? Did you really know? Then growing up, he was a hooper, and he played basketball. And they say he was really very good. And he had this love for sports. He was a regular at the WNBA games with the Minnesota team. Man, when they won the championship, world, world championship, he gave them a party at his house. <laughs> Three-hour-long private concert. Three hours long for them, the team. And then served them breakfast. <laughs> Guess what he cooked? Pancakes. Pancakes. <laughs> he was such a legend and a regular at the basketball games that the teams in Minnesota naturally adored him because he's a local. He's from Minnesota, and everybody loves him. But the, the NBA team, the Minnesota Timberwolves, how about this? They designed a special edition road uniform in purple for who for prince 
You need to go read the article. This is just a, a, a snippet of what was going on. But you need to go read that article in Sports Illustrated. Boy, the tie always between musicians and athletes is always special. Hey, Prince was a special kind of guy. And he was beloved in Minnesota. And he supported his team. It's insights. <laughs> now you know. <clears throat> I knew. I knew he cooked pancakes. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. It reminds me of the Dave Chappelle, uh, Charlie Murphy doing the true Hollywood stories. The time they were, they met Prince in the club and went and played basketball at Prince's house. And Prince kicked their ass. That's right. And then That's served right. the pancakes after. <laughs> <laughs> but they said, I interned at the um, the Minneapolis Tribune. Uh, Did you? Yeah. Uh, okay. Summer of 90. And, okay. and Prince was, I mean, it's, it's true. They told me he was a hooper. There's no BS. Yeah, he was shorter than me. Uh, about five. Two. I was going to say about 5'3", five, 5'4", five, but 5'2", but can hoop and can go and will take you on. And I could never find him on the basketball court, though, but it was good. Probably better for That's me. You didn't, go to his, you didn't go to Paisley Park to I, play. That's I, why. I, oh, no. No. <laughs> they don't, never did, but uh, I, 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 I really appreciated his music. And and he's a hooper, so you know I have a little bit of heart, a little bit in my heart for him. So it's all good. I right, said he would leave a concert, go play, and play in his heels. I mean, I mean, yeah, court, I, I inside and outside. Three hours, three hour concert. I can see him doing it too. Yeah, yeah. I can see him doing it too. Shout out. I mean, R I H Prince. R I H man. And did you know? Did I, you know? Show. I didn't know all of that. Especially about the wolves and, and and the purple jerseys, but that should have, duh, duh, should have. Hey, you know those collectors items now. You probably can't find one of them anywhere. Mm -mm, probably not. And probably see, not. I wanted to do something, you know, a little lighthearted because we, you know, this COVID nineteen, it's amazing. You know, they're able to, to still try and pull off the Olympics. You know, last week it was seventy one cases. Now it's you know close to one hundred and fifty in, in the village. Um, the COVID numbers are going up everywhere. Uh, we keep trying to tell people that, you know, you need to get tested. You know, people are going on with so many rumors. And and I tell you, we always end up fighting with the millennials, you know, as, as they tell me. So we, I said, I said, we're having a discussion. We're not having an argument, Mr. Clay. We're having a discussion. I said, more, it's more like an argument. I'm tired of trying to tell y'all about COVID-19. But we actually have uh, two individuals that work in the community really involved with trying to get people involved with getting their shots, getting tested, getting vaccinations, getting all of those things that uh, really will allow them to, to be around a little bit longer. And that's uh, Ian and Joe. And I'm going to add both of them to the stream here, two FAMU alums, just like you and I. Uh, yes, welcome, yes. Ian and Joseph. We appreciate y'all being with us today. Hello, how you doing? Thank you, thank you. All right, thank y'all, gentlemen, for having us. FAMU in the house. Yes, sir. You got to have the green on the day. Got to. <laughs> oh, boy, I see Ricky just <laughs> like you. See, I see you pointing. <laughs> I, I, I see you, Rick. I see you. I see you. Well, everybody be trying to hate on fam you, don't they? Yeah, they do. You can't, hate you. You can't do it. When you're the best, that's how it is. Mm -hmm. that, that, speak up, Joseph. I hear you. Speak yes, up. <laughs> well, gentlemen, what I first like for you, each one of you to do, um, and for, I got to give a special uh, shout, out, shout out to our assistant producer for being able to secure you two to be on today. We 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 appreciate that, but starting Joseph with you, uh, could you tell us a little bit about uh, what you do, and so that people will understand the significance of what you're getting ready to say to them? All right. So my name is Joseph Ward. I'm 
from here in Tallahassee, Florida, like I said, graduate of Florida AM University. And Rickards. At Rickards High School, of course. <laughs> um, I work, I currently work at Neighborhood Medical Center. I am a part of the Ryan White HIV AIDS Prevention Program, where I'm the health educator and outreach specialist. But since last March, uh, like Ian and others that work with Neighborhood, we've literally been on the front lines since the beginning of COVID, since the beginning of testing. We've been uh, on the front lines for that. We've been on the front lines for vaccinations. We've been on the front lines for education. Like We've literally been out here. There's been no working from home. We're out in the community doing COVID. So that's the angle that I'm coming from. And my job, my name is Ian Costello. I'm a system administrator, also a graduate of FAMU. Um, my job is to make sure all those events or anything that he does in the community when we say testing like that, we're not doing it just in the clinic. We're actually going to the community. So my job is to make sure once we get to those communities, we have everything we need as far as internet, electricity, fans, because it's very hot outside, um, tents. We have different mobile units that we bring out to the community where we can perform services like we're in the clinic. So that's my job to make sure once we get to wherever we're going, we're going to make sure we have everything that we need to get the job done. Well, thank you. That's we appreciate what you two are doing. Talk about being in the military. You two, you two are in the military. <laughs> you know, you're fighting a battle that's going on 24 um, seven. Either one of you. But, but what is the thing that really has you that has disappointed you the most in what you're doing with COVID-19? <laughs> um, you, you want to leave with the book? We got to leave the book. You know, oh, Rick, if you look at them, it look like, you know. man, um, I, I got to thumb through this to find what I can tell. <laughs> but it's uh, for me, okay, from the beginning in our communities in Tallahassee, because that's all I can speak for is the com our communities that we live in, our people. I, I haven't seen a a good enough a good number of our people actually following protocols as wearing masks not gathering um making sure that you educate yourself a lot of people have allowed narratives from the street committees to just dominate their thought processes nobody's well i'm not gonna say anybody but not enough people are reading the information like when we give vaccines we give people a packet to let you know the ingredients of it, how it works, the who, what, where, when, why, and how. One of the things that have been aggravating is just the lack of self-education, but also just not following something basic as wearing your mask when in public and not gathering in groups more than 10. Because as you stated, COVID cases are rising. They're, 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 they've gone down, but they're coming back up and getting different variants. And it's not going to slow down until we follow protocol. Yeah, and I think it's just people not understanding that. It's, I want to say it's also a history thing. You know, people are not used to getting something like the vaccine, especially for free, and not being considered guinea pigs or, you know, especially in the black community. But the vaccine is for everybody. It's not just for us. It's for everybody. And it's just getting people to understand that it's here for you and it's here to save you. You know, because a lot of people don't realize that until it's too late, which we don't want that. We want you to know, get this information and know. Like you said, we've been doing testing since March and we still haven't top, stopped testing. We're doing, we have testing coming up this weekend. We're still providing the vaccine. We provide it at our clinic. Um, if anybody wants one, we have all three. You know, some people don't want this one. Some people don't want that one. We provide all three vaccines. It's your choice. So we're still out here trying to just basically give people the education to let them know that it's preventable. If you just follow these standards right here, you'll be fine. Well, what about it uh, that, that, that has you worried about this Delta variant? It's like what concerns me is that people seem to have taken it for granted now that it's, it's like a, a worse version of the cold and you'll be all right. But it's always something that's going on. And then I understand that we just had another, the Columbia variant that just showed up in Miami. And I, I, I'm trying to, I, I want you to, either one of you, both of you, to speak on these variants that are out there that, People are completely discounted. It's just like anything out there. Everything mutates. So once it's just like anything, once they realize, okay, I can stop it by doing this. Well, let me switch it up. Let me adapt. Let me change it up. So it's just like any kind of medicine. 
different codes. There's different. There's not just one code. There's different codes. From Joe's point of view, with, with HIV and AIDS, uh, it's different STDs. It's not just one STD. So it's just everything mutates. It's, it's all about evolution. So, but it's, it's different medicines out there that stop it. Um, like I said, the vaccine is one, but different different precautions. Um, but like I said, right now, according to the CDC guidelines, the vaccine can stop the current variant. So it's still an ongoing process. This is something that a lot of people haven't seen before. So it's just about just following those little steps, like getting vaccine, washing hands, staying masked up, just to stop it. And then at the same time, it's, it's time. It's all about time. Right, right. And building on that, like you said, when I when I think about it, because I have to, during my time working at HIV AIDS, I've learned a bit about how viruses work. So looking at the behavior of the viruses, these viruses are trying to stay alive. These viruses use cell replication to stay alive, being that it's a retrovirus. So it's going to get into the the uh, the cell and it's going to rewrite the, the DNA of the cell using the RNA and write it backwards and then bud out and go on by this business using that behavior. So when we're talking about the different variants, in that process, as you say, as these different variants meet these different blockers or meet these different things that the human may put into their body, just like any other biological component, it's going to mutate. That's how we got from being bacteria to humans these days, the mutations. The different variants are going to affect people differently. So we know this Delta variant is a lot more aggressive than some of the variants that we've experienced in the past. People are getting sick faster and some people may be getting sick longer. But I want people to also realize that the long term effects from the different variants will be different as well. And we don't right now, we don't know how serious the long term effects could be. One of the uh, long term effects that I read about was uh, what did they call it? Um, I can't remember the name, but it was talking about basically blood clots being formed in the oh, they called it COVID toes blood clots being formed in the toes and the small vessels in the toes of people, which is causing the toes to be disfigured a bit, but it's blood clots being formed in these things. So we don't know long-term how these variants will really have an effect on the body. But we do know, like you said, we do know the Johnson and Johnson that's been said to be one of the best uh, vi uh, vaccines to take to deal with specifically the Delta variant. But, the other variants are coming around, so we still got to wash our hands, still got to wear masks, still have to social distance. So, well, one of the things that you're saying, you're talking about the mutations, and Rick and I have discussed this before, and the fact that when this first came out, when we were trying to sound the alarm about it way back when it was in Wuhan, you know, they would tell, even my own family was like, you know, you're just kind of panicking a little bit too much. But back then they were saying that the body, I mean, the virus was mutating generations while it was inside a host, which was at that time making it very difficult to treat it because it wasn't the same. Um, it wasn't the same when you got infected with it as it is after it stayed in your body because it mutated so long. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And and now we keep having these, these different variants. And one of the things that you said that I don't think people really give enough credence to is even though you may survive from the virus and get better, you don't know the long-term effects that it has on your body. Right. You know, even though, you know, I've had a member of the family, it took them probably three months where they could get all of their taste back, but you don't ever know what else it may affect in you internally that might not show up for five or 10 years. You don't know because it's, you know, it stays within your, your system. Right. Now, one of the other questions I wanted to ask you was how are you received in the community? I, I, I could imagine that you have those who are glad to see you and others that are like, why are y'all even out here? <laughs> yeah. So we, ha we have an advantage on other healthcare providers because we were already in the community we've already built trust with the people so the out the community we serve they already know we're not going to offer them something that's going to be harmful to them also we've taken the, vi the vaccine ourselves 
So we can give firsthand accounts on what the vaccine does in your body, how it can affect from different perspectives. Um, and we, because we know the uh, when they take the vaccine, it's going to affect different people differently. I took the vaccine. I could have ran a marathon after both doses. I was cool. It didn't didn't do that for everybody. But that's the that's the vaccine working in the body. But it's it's really just understanding what it is. Education, education, education. When we when we when we're giving these people this education, they already trust us. They already know us. They already see us. We already have nicknames in the community. They're familiar with us from doing HIV AIDS, and I'm the condom man. I'm the sex man. I'm all these men. So, so, so we getting phone calls. I've gotten a million phone calls and people asking me. So, Joe, tell me what you think, and I'll, mm -hmm. I'll be honest with them. If you if you don't want to take the vaccine then you, under, you need to understand the precautions that you need to take for yourself. If you do take the vaccine, you still need to take the precautions. I want people to really understand. The vaccine does not stop the transmission of the virus. The vaccine lessens the symptoms in your body because we have a lot of people who think, well, I'm vaccinated, don't have to wear a mask. But, being in the, but to answer the question, being in the community, already, established, already having established relationships, it made it easier for us to get people vaccinated and it made easy it made it easier for people to ask us questions and trust our answers because they already know that we're not going to just steer them in the wrong way joe let me let me interrupt you i need you to go back to the point when you were saying people feel like because they're vaccinated they don't have to wear masks mm -hmm. would you elaborate some on that because i've heard that frequently stated right so according to the cdc because this information straight from the cdc the vaccinations are designed to reduce the symptoms of COVID within the body. So I take the vaccine. If I, if I don't have the vaccine and I contract COVID and let's say I have other health disparities or maybe don't, I could be down sick for a week or so or however, however many days it may affect my body. If I'm vaccinated, I may not get as sick. So if, let's say without the vaccination, my scale can be from one to 10. Let's say I go from, I go to an eight without the vaccine. With the vaccine, I could probably stay at a one or a two and not have to deal with extreme symptoms in my body if I'm vaccinated. But according to the CDC, the virus itself can still be transmitted from one person to the next. Especially with the new variants like you spoke about earlier, some like the Delta variant, it's more contractible. I think it says 65% more passable or contractable from other people. So that's why they say it's good to get the vaccine, but also you got to still keep your guard up. Like you still have to, it's like the sports person, we playing football. Yeah, we on we on the field and you know, we playing, we got pads on, we secure, but you still got to keep your head on the swivel and make sure nothing comes at you. Right. So you know, you protected. Yeah, I'm protected. I'm very secure. Got helmet and everything on, but you can still get hit. <laughs> Well, you know, well, Ian, you, you know, you I don't think that you're real honest with us because you ain't share with us what your nickname is. <laughs> See, if, oh, Joe, if he could tell us he's the condom man, I'm <laughs> sure that you know you ought to be able to share what yours is. I, I, I'm gonna keep it simple. I'm, I'm just gonna be security. I'm security. And when, we pull, when we pull up, I'm security. They be like, big man. <laughs> Man, when I asked you that, Ian Joe almost fell out the chair over there laughing. Because, <laughs> as you, like he said, he's been coming. So we work with a lot of HIV, a lot of not, but we do a lot of testing. So we 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 go from like one of the events that we do on a every other Friday before COVID. Every other Friday, we're on fan you set testing students. Um, we also we be at the corner store in Holton Street or in Frenchtown. We be everywhere. So you meet a lot of different people, and you're gonna get a lot of different names. <laughs> so, I'm gonna I'm just give one because Joe can do it. So, my name Rick, is Ian. you see how he skated around there? Oh, yeah. I'm gonna oh, yeah. give you one. I'm gonna give you one. So, my name is Ian, but you know, Tallahassee, Gas County, everywhere, it's a lot of country by my name. So, one of the biggest names I get is Ion. I'm like, who is Ion? <laughs> and then, but, my, my favorite, they call him Lenny. Don't have nothing to do with his <laughs> name, but his <laughs> nickname Lenny. So yeah, I, I got a few nicknames, but that, that, I'm gonna keep those right now. It, it, no, like no, you say, you be in the no community, you, you know who we are. Right. I, I like that, Lenny. I, I, I like Lenny. I like that. I like that. 
Hey, 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 let me do it nothing. Just flat yeah. out Lenny. Lenny. <laughs> Lenny. Hey, uh, hey, look, hey, name. Go ahead, hey, Rick. Yeah. Hey, guys. Hey, a, a lot of the young, the young groups say 18 to 35, people in that range. During that time, they think they're almost invulnerable. They think they're Superman. S is on the chest and nothing can harm me, not even kryptonite. How do you get them to wake up? and to see what's really happening and to get vaxxed, vax, get vaxxed, as I, I like to shorten it. It's sad to say it's, it's a two part. So one part is just simple word of mouth. Like my friend got vaccinated, I'm gonna go get vaccinated. You know, like they, they see other peers, other friends, other family members doing it. And like they did it, they all right, I'm gonna go do it too, why not? And then the, the bad part of that is gonna have to either happen to them or they gonna see somebody with it and be down bad, and that's gonna make them go get it. So right. it's, it's two parts to it. Is that's that's the only way I see it. Is either you're gonna go from word of mouth, family, friends, get it ahead of time, or it's gonna take you seeing somebody that you know personally. Like when it hit, finally hits to your circle, that's gonna hopefully make you go get it before yeah. you. Yeah, I, I try to I try to get them to to look at it from this perspective. Okay, so you may contract the COVID, and it may not have a a a real effect on you it may not you you may have mild symptoms you may have the sniffles or whatever and you 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 deal with the symptoms for a couple of days maybe a week and you're over it but let's say you take this virus home or you take this virus around loved ones and you inadvertently pass it on to loved ones and it affects them deathly or it affects them greatly it really uh debilitates that person is that really something you really want to be involved in? Because yes, you may you may feel like you feel invincible. You feel like the virus is like you said earlier. Some people just call it a, a mild flu, which we know is not now, but some people call it that. Yet it like for me, when I took the vaccine, I realized I, I'm at a health enough level. If I get the virus, I may not know I have symptoms. I may be asymptomatic. But I live I live in a neighborhood. I my mom is disabled. I help my mom. I'm not bringing this virus back to my mom and I'm not bringing this virus into this community because that would be irresponsible. And I love these people. So if it's, if we're really talking about being healthy and, and looking out for people and maintaining health, especially the people that we love, then we need to be more vigilant about protecting ourselves, wearing your mask, getting vaccinated, washing your hands, stay away from crowds, following the protocols. Yeah, it may not affect you, but what about the people around you? Well, what does it mean, asymptomatic? Uh, would you tell uh, everybody exactly what that means? Asymptomatic means when you have no physical signs or symptoms. And sometimes asymptomatic could also mean it's not detected in a particular test, depending on the level of mm -hmm. antibodies that may be available in the person's body. So, but hey, hey, wait, stop, stop. So you can actually be tested, have COVID. Well, not necessarily tested. COVID. Well, let me clear that up. I was because okay. I was using that as an example for asymptomatic, not necessarily for COVID. As far as we know, for most COVID tests, if you have it in your system, it's going to show. So okay. asymptomatic, that's kind of a, um, one of the definitions we use for HIV because we have a something called undetectable where a person can be so healthy that the HIV doesn't show. But they still don't have the signs and symptoms. But for COVID, if you take that test, it's going to show. But most people are now not going to get tested until they have the signs and symptoms. And you could be asymptomatic, meaning having no signs and symptoms. And when it comes to tests, there, there are main two main tests that's available. Um, a lot of people know about the rapid test, which is 15 minutes. You get swabbed, you get your results in 15 minutes. And then what they call the PCR test, which is a lab test. It's the same swab. They send it to a lab, they test it, and they give you your results. When, when it comes to COVID, those two tests, it really depends on how long you've been exposed and it, and it, and it develops. So what they call an incubation period. Like you can be in contact with somebody, say you hit, you, you came in contact with somebody that's COVID positive on Sunday, and you go get a test on Monday. It might not show, but right. if you wait two to three days, or maybe to maybe say Friday, when you say you might start getting a headache, it may show on that rapid test and then that lab test. So lab test is more, it's more accurate. 
but the rapid test is also good. But also, like I say, tell people it just depends on when you get tested. You know, because like I said, you can get come in contact Sunday, get tested on Tuesday, and it might not show. But come Wednesday, Thursday, you do that same test, it's going to show. So it also depends on what test you get will give you more of an accuracy, and it just depends. Well, what about the difference in symptoms with the Delta variant as opposed to, uh, you know, with the newer Delta variant? I understand the symptoms are a little different, that they're not the same as the original one. For the most part, the symptoms are the same. Okay. Um, it's just they're being, they're being more aggressive. Right. So, like I said, it's, it's more contractible, and the symptoms are more aggressive. So, you know, it's like it's more of a, and it's more of an onset thing. Usually with the previous variant, it kind of slowly starts affecting. You might start off with just sore throat. You might start off with this. With the Delta variant, it's more expressed. So, like, usually when it hits or you start experiencing symptoms, you're just, it just hits. It's down. It's down. Boom. <laughs> So yeah, that's the, with the advantage. Like I said, but at the same time, it's a mutation. So it done learned like, yeah, the first time we came around, you know, we, we did this, did this. So now we're going to come this way and show you. So anything, just a mutation. Wow. Thank you for dispelling uh, that myth. Another myth that goes along uh, real popular with y'all millennials is that uh, it, that people are afraid to take the vaccine the, the vaccine because they're afraid it'll make a male make the men sterile. They want to have children. Okay, okay. So oh, yeah, this, you heard that one before, boy. Could... <laughs> okay, yeah, because this this people are associating this with the Tuskegee experiment, and it's not the same thing. But even people with the Tuskegee experiment, yes, they. They allowed people who had syphilis in the black community to have syphilis for 40 years. They were studying them. That was malpractice. That was inhumane. They was wrong for that. We get that. But a lot of these, a lot of these people, um, I want them to really think about the choices that they're giving themselves. So you have a vaccine that we have information about that the disparities are one percent around the one percent range then we have covid who's been wreaking havoc we know deaths are over six hundred thousand so you you you're taking your chances and you're letting conspiracy theory kind of leave you in limbo with with taking your chances um i i don't have any information from any sources because i i do a lot of research i go into my nerd phases i go into the cdc and i search and i search i haven't found any information about anything making anybody sterile um i know i i know personally some men who taken the vaccine and made babies after they've had the vaccine <laughs> so i don't I've, i haven't found because like i said i'm a i'm a i'm a conspiracy theorist to a point but i have I, i'm around people and we we will research and research and research and research and just haven't found any information to support that the virus can leave you sterile but we do have information to show that the virus can cause massive damage in your body, though. Another right. thing with the COVID vaccine that's different from the CD experiment that it's available to everybody. Right. It's not just available to young people, old people. It's available for anybody within the guidelines. So right now it's 12 and up for the Pfizer vaccine, but it's available to everybody. So that, that's another one of the things. So it's not just isolated to the black community. It's available to anybody and everybody that's eligible in the range to get it. And also, you know, consult with your primary care physician. If you don't have one, you know, you can always come down here to the Lovely Neighborhood Medical Center. We'll provide you one. I like um, that. Yes. Shameless <laughs> plug. <laughs> you can consult with your medical physician to find out if it's best for you. You know, yeah. we have patients that have all ran a gamut as far as when it comes to um, pre, pre diseases, different diseases. You know, we have some HIV patients. We have some people that have heart disease. We have some people that have cancer. They discuss with their doctor. They recommend what's best, which which um, vaccine will be best for them, and take it. So we, we have given it to everybody. But I would say consult with your doctor, and it has to be a personal decision too. Uh -huh. Rick, did you hear Joe? You know, he said he knows uh, some people that got vaccinated and had children. Uh -huh. Hey, they look. I don't need to use a condom because I've been vaccinated, <laughs> and, uh, and, and so I'm I, I'm sterile. I, I I can't produce children because I got the vaccination, so I don't need to use a condom. Don't listen right. to condom. That, that vaccine might give you the superpower you never knew you had, man. When you, when you <laughs> end up on Maury Povich, 
<laughs> we didn't see you there. <laughs> COVID nineteen, baby. Here, right. I, <laughs> baby. Here. I thought you said you was sterile because you had the vaccination. <laughs> you know, brothers, brothers say anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Joe, we gotta start passing our comments with every vaccine you get. I see that. <laughs> but that's that's literally why we we construct the events where we do COVID testing and HIV testing because. One of the things that has happened because of the uh, the pandemic is we went from doing 300 HIV tests a month to around five because it affected how we interact with our people. So we still have to educate people. We still have to give HIV and STDs didn't slow down because of COVID. That, that don't mean nothing to them. Right. So we, we started, all right, we're doing these COVID events. Let's start incorporating HIV testing when we go to these different events, even if we're just doing vaccines or testing, incorporate HIV testing so we can still be able to educate people on the safe sex side, but still be able to get our COVID information out and get people the vaccines and or the test. Yeah, and that's, our, that's our main goal here in neighborhood as well, is to just give you the information. Like We want you to make sure let you know that these resources here are available to you and that you can take the advantage of them if you need them. Like that's our main thing is educate you on what you need to know. We're going to give you that. We're going to give you the information and also give you facts to back it up. So that's that's our main goal. Like I said with Joe, we being, being in the community is to pass on the information and give you the education and let you know if you heal if, and you need something, we got you. Well, I appreciate what you, you've shared with us. I'm going to leave you with this story. When I was in South Africa with the university and um, AIDS was running rampant, um, one of the stories that the older men were using was that they were telling the younger girls that if they use unprotected sex, if they engage in unprotected sex, my semen was an antidote from you getting the AIDS and was infecting them at an extremely high rate. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were actually going back to do a basketball clinic actually on AIDS education in Johannesburg, but I got fired before then, so I couldn't do that. But I mean, but we were going to use basketball as an instrument to try to educate them about AIDS. And so I was kind of ad living a little bit about the brother being vaccinated and being sterile. But that guys say a lot of some guys say a lot of different things. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But I, what I would really like to again, I, I'd like to thank. Uh, our executive producer in terms of reaching out to you two young men. Uh, you you really gave us a lot of information here and uh, it's a lot to a lot to digest and a lot to go through. I think the key thing that we're trying to get everybody to understand is that you actually need to get vaccinated. And, <clears throat> and, uh, I, I, and it's getting worse. I mean, the numbers that I've looked at that I've had access to shows that things have tripled and quadrupled, not in three months, but in three weeks. And it's just, and you're looking at concerts like the one where we're going to play the Orange Blossom Classic at, and they've got hundreds of thousands of people there. And you're looking at unmasked people. So it. It's almost scary, and some information is supposed to come out from the CDC today about a mask mandate. Um, and if people don't understand, I mean, that these things are basically implemented to help you and to help your family. You know, if you don't care anything about yourself, you know, care about your, your mom, your grandmother, your children, you know, because a lot of the kids, you know, parents are upset about the kids having to go back to school and they're not required to wear masks. Uh -huh. You know, and your nine or ten year old, if they're not being told to wear them, they're not going to wear them. They're not going to put that mask on until they come back home. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and when people actually start losing more of our children, then maybe people will begin to pay more attention. And I don't know how much louder we can ring the bell. Than what we're doing, but insights will continue to bring that to us. Yes, sir. Again, I'd like to thank you, Rick. Anything you'd like to say to these uh, family grads who working in the community and, and giving back and trying to help the community? Keep pushing, guys. I mean, there, there will be resistance. The resistance is there, but keep pushing. Keep pushing. Keep striking. Because you know what we do. Strike, you know what we do. Strike, strike, strike. 
That's yes, right. Man. So I, I do want to say thank you all for having us on. Great conversation. Mm-hmm. This we had a great time. Got a new favorite podcast to check out. Definitely gonna subscribe. <laughs> I'm subscribing. But mm-hmm. I would like to extend the invitation. We have a podcast that neighborhood medical center called Mind Your Body and Soul. And we center it around health. So we would like to uh, to make sure we stay in contact with you gentlemen, have you guys on our show to have some men's health discussions because we need more. We need more men's health discussions. So we do want to extend that olive branch to you gentlemen as well. Um, this is this is great. A great conversation. You ask great questions. So I appreciate it. Yeah, let me say, say you this, you know, uh, your, the reporter's favorite reporter, he's a celebrity. But anytime that, that you, <laughs> you, you need us, let us know. Uh, and, and we're available. Uh, we got involved with an, another group out of Orlando, on, on this, uh, Black Men on Sunday. Um, and it's about 20 or 30 of them on Sunday afternoons just discussing a, a, a litany of different issues, self-help issues to try to educate right. each other. Uh, both Rick and myself are both committed to the community as the Mick and Rick show, you see. Um, y'all, you know, take our link, push it to as many people as, as oh, yeah. you like to help us grow and let us know what we could do to help yours grow so that uh, we can continue to work together. You know, that's the, the biggest thing, the most disheartening thing sometimes is that we don't reach back and help somebody else, you know. Right. And, and as a people, we need to do more of that because we are very strong in number. Um, and in our interest, the things that interest one of us actually interests a lot of us because it's about each one of us. And the one thing I loved about teaching, working, coaching at FAMU was that, you know, we always wanted each of you coming behind us to be better than what we were because you're the ones that are going back into our community have to raise my children and my grandchildren. So we want you to be successful. That's what Dr. Frederick Humphreys told us many, many years ago, you know, that Y'all are the future, and if we keep working and helping you and want you to succeed, so you you one of us. You know, you don't take a job from our children. You know, you're helping enhance that. So anything that we can do, you know, we're there to do it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We definitely will. We appreciate it. Um, anybody want to find any more information out about the vaccine or about Neighborhood Medical Center, you can find us online at neighborhoodmedicalcenter.org. And if you want to find out more information about that, that good podcast this man right here host. It's on uh, nmcpodcast.com. And, and I do want to say, go on to neighborhoodmedicalcenter.org. You can literally register on the website to get the vaccine. And this information to get tested is right down the website. So check us out. Neighborhoodcenter.org. Neighborhoodmedicalcenter.org. Yes, sir. Neighborhoodmedicalcenter.org. Yes, sir. All right. And the podcast is? NMC Mind Your podcast. Body and Soul. Mm-hmm. Available on nmcpodcast.com. Yep, and uh, Neighborhood Medical Center YouTube channel as well. So, all right, okay, need you guys to send that to me, and, and we will put it at the uh, in the link uh, on our show that, that goes up. We, you know, our our numbers keep going up. The more Rick is involved with us, the the more people we get involved with us. You know, he 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 is the Lakeland Ledger legend. So. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Legend in my own mind, guys. Don't fall for it. Don't Ooh, fall for it. from insights visit our website at insights.com two eyes in the middle i-n-s-i-i-g-h-t-s insights is a copyright of mac4 enterprises a florida corporation this broadcast is produced under the exclusive ownership of mac4 enterprises and is the intellectual property and trademark of mac4 enterprises comments of the host and other individual speakers on insights represent the independent thoughts and representation One, two, three, 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 three. And wear a mask. You get see, uh, Rick wear a mask. Get back. Interviewing with uh, Shaq. Who else can say they interviewed Shaq? He he looked like he was like Shaq's nephew or something, but he <laughs> wear a mask. Get wear back. Wear a mask. Get we back. appreciate you, Ian. Uh, much love to you. Holla at us. Let us know what we can do. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having us. Have a good one. Thank All you. Right. You too. All right, now. Talk to you later, Rick, Rick. We out.